Thank you, everyone, for watching my show, William Wallace for America. And as you know, I'm traveling around the state, both figuratively and, I guess, uh, virtually in this case. And I am interviewing people running for office. With me today is our treasurer, John Schroeder, who's running for governor. How are you doing today, John? I am on the road traveling. So it's a, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's a big state. You know, a couple things that I that I noticed, so that I don't mind telling you about. One, our interstate system is filthy. I mean, that is absolutely something that we have to get addressed. I don't know uh, exactly the answer and the fix, but cheese and pizza, our interstate system is dirty. You know, it's interesting. That's a great point because all these other all the other candidates that are running for office. You always hear about schools and bridges and roads. But you don't hear so much about keeping it, keeping it clean, and so uh, so when you point that out, and, and you're and you're driving the state, you're actually I would say not only boots on the ground, your wheels on the ground, seeing lots of different things, aren't you? Yeah, I mean today I'm not driving. I typically all am. You know, it's sort of one of my I don't know pet peeves. Of course, it's hard to do a Zoom call while you're driving, so uh, I'm not driving uh, right now, but. You know, I, I um, you know, I, I tell people a lot that we don't do the little things well, and the big. It's no wonder the big things aren't working because we don't even do the little things well. And in your in your business, and you know how this works. Mm -hmm. If you don't do the little things well, nothing else happens. So, you know, if if we want people to live here and love here and move here, we got to do the basic things like how about we just keep this place clean or cleaner? Right. And, I, and I know there's been a big effort uh, from, from the Lieutenant Governor. I applaud him on that. But man, we got, we got a lot of work to do. Well, you know, now that you've been traveling the state, I'm, I, I, I thought of something different to ask you than I haven't asked any other candidates. You know, now that you're traveling the state, you're hearing everybody saying, of course, it's very easy to say, you know, we need to fix our roads and bridges. We need to fix our schools, education, you know, crime, those are all the things that everybody says. But now that right. you're traveling, traveling the state, you're, you're actually talking to other people. Do you have a different perspective about maybe there's another approach than what everybody else is saying generically? Well, look, I'm not very generic. I, and I you know. know that, man. I, I don't know what generic is. You know, I my message is a little different than what you're hearing from everybody else. I, you know, my my biggest reason for getting in this race is I want to change the culture of this state because I think it's, yes, our education is a problem. Yes, crime is a problem. But it's really our culture of cronyism, corruption that stains this state that our young people don't like, that our business climate, uh, the people in business don't like. And, and business people aren't stupid. They're going to go where they're wanted. And they, they just want the rules to be be the rules and access equal to all. And, you know, those are the things that I see coming from the small business world. And um, that's that's my experiences. And, I, I, you know, it's funny that that's the first thing you ask me, because it gets back to what I said earlier about do, doing the little things. You know, I was taught as a young entrepreneur, do the little things, the big things take care of themselves. So. You know, how you how you going to fix a education system if you don't invest in it? You know, that's that's a basic thing. You know, if if you want to have people um, take care of their communities, let's clean them. You know? I mean, yeah, it's just basic you know, things that you should do every day. You're you're um, saying something. You're saying something that falls right along with what I would not only expect you to say, but within your. Um, not your such a personality, but um, was a part of you. I guess I'll, I'll say I'll say it like this way to get to the check to cut to the chase. You know, you're not one of the candidates that says all the things that people want to hear. You're not one of the candidates that says the things that that get people excited. You're a candidate that actually speaks on the basics. You speak on on the facts, and you speak of the things that people really aren't excited to hear. But it's almost like we need to do more than the narratives. You know, we need to go back to the basics more than we need to say, hey, let's do this. You know, let's fix this narrative, if you will. You know, right. you're not saying the things that people make people excited. You're saying the things that 
or just need to be done. And it's a very factual way to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you recognize it because I'm, I'm hoping enough people around the state recognize it because you're, you're, you're absolutely 100%. I recognize because of my experience in the legislature as state treasurer, as 32 years in business, law enforcement veteran, military veteran, I'm in a prime of my ladies bring all the experiences and assets to the table at the time in life. And so that's key. Don't talk about the the normal thing that everybody wants to talk about. I talk about the things that are really causing the problem that nobody wants to really discuss. And I'm telling you, if we don't get a hold of the cronyism and the corruption in this problem in this state, it's a problem from the top to the bottom. This isn't just something you see in Baton Rouge. This is pay to play politics that infects the whole process, both in the business community and throughout government. Yeah, like I said, not only have I seen it, but watching you on the campaign trail a little bit more, you know, you, you, you're you pointing out the examples. And they're not the shiny objects everybody wants, wants to hear about, but they are, the, they, are the, they are the things that are behind the shiny objects that's making our state not run efficiently. And I like the fact that you're pointing that out because, you know, when I'm in the – you have a lot more experience in Baton Rouge than I do, that's for sure, you know, a million, million times more. But when I'm up there and I see the lobbyists and I see the the different interest groups and I see everybody working together, and then I don't I see nothing happen, I realize, wait a minute, what's all these meetings for? Nothing's going to happen. And you're actually get putting putting uh, plans behind your actions. What in your mind are are some of the things that you think that you would want to go do right as governor? Right when you get in the doors of governor, what are the first things you're going to tackle? Well, look, I look. Again, this isn't fancy smancy campaign talk. We got to go back to the basics. I mean, people lost faith and in, in trust in government. I used to say that people were losing faith and trust in government. Now they've lost it. And I, I can't, can't tell you how many times I've been in front of 50 to 100 people and asked somebody to raise their hand if they trust government. You know, I, haven't well, seen somebody, I haven't seen somebody raise a hand in months. You know, so my goal will be to set a tone um, and have a zero tolerance for the cronyism. And that will end. That will start with me. The rules are going to be the rules. And I, I say this all the time. I believe the state needs a CEO that that truly manages the operation and pays attention to the infrastructure in this state. And I don't mean roads and bridges. I mean, how do we deliver services like education, like law enforcement and and have has a zero tolerance for the for the cronyism and, and establishes uh, a, a situation where the rules will be the rules for everybody and access is equal to all i mean that's just the bottom line i'm going to kill the culture of corruption and cronyism and then um we'll you know and build a faith in the process um and and go from there because until you, until you have a, a foundation, I often describe it like building a house. You don't put your walls up before you pour your concrete. And you right. don't put the roof on the house until you build your walls, you know? But, you know, it, again, this isn't fancy campaign talk, but this really is about leadership. And as an Army veteran and somebody who is a veteran in law enforcement, if you followed the wrong leader – may not go home at night, you know, and so leadership to me is, that is sacred to me. I mean, not, not very many people can say they're the leader. So you're, and, you're, and looking, we, you're looking to take this position and use leadership skills as a way to direct all the legislators to do the right thing instead of using narratives and the media and pushing those narratives and ideologies out there to force them to do something. You want to lead them to do something instead. Is that the right way to observe that correctly? Yeah, you, you, you are very articulate. I'm going to say it a lot shorter. I'm going to show them what we need to do. 
because I have the experience. I've seen it. I know what we need to do. I could start this job tomorrow. There won't be no, there will be no on the job training. You know, I'll, I'll be able to start the day I get elected uh, because I've been there. I've done it. I just haven't had control, you know, and I, I haven't had control of the decision making. You elected me to be the state treasurer of Louisiana, not the culture warrior. Okay. So if you want a culture warrior, I might not, I'm probably not your guy. I fight my culture wars when I go to church on Sunday. Our culture war and our, our political fights are not going to make us better in education, better in our crime fighting, mm -hmm. fix the corruption and cronyism problem. You need a leader who brings the, uh, like a CEO would do, you bring the talent to the table. And I've said this often, we're going to bring talent to this state. And we're gonna we're gonna start moving the ball, but we need thirty years of good governance, not four years. Thirty years. These are generational problems. We didn't get here overnight. We're not gonna get overnight, get out overnight. But I will bring talent to the table. We're gonna pay people to come take these jobs in government, and we're gonna start moving the ball. I'm gonna bring entrepreneurs in. We're gonna we're gonna use technology. We're gonna invest where we need to. We're going to get out of some of these archaic processes and we're going to run it like a business. But if, if you if you don't want to run, if you don't want government run like a business, then pick one of the four lawyers or the two engineers. But in the top seven candidates, I'm the only businessman in the, in the group. So. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what I bring to the table. You know, there's two things that you said that, that really intrigued me. Uh, one. You just now talked about you're not going to be the governor to fail, fix it in four years. You that, that, and, and look, and that's one of those things about you that's just honest, that people need to realize that of all the candidates that are making promises to fix it in four years, that it's just that you're not going to be a fix in four years what's been broken for, what, 60, 70, 80 years. Right. It, but you want to use your leadership skills to be able to get Louisiana on track to be able to not only fix things, but make it a make it um, uh, set the course for future governors to be able to continue fix things. That to me is forward thinking. So one, am I right about that? Or did I observe that correctly? Yeah, again, you, you, you're very articulate. So I would say it this way. We need a foundation. I need to come build a foundation and that's going to take some time for the next governor to be able to put the walls up and then the next governor is going to have to put the roof up and you know because we need walls of steel not walls of paper or mud and we need a roof of metal and shingles and asphalt not branches because that's what we're dealing with now i mean i'm in a construction business so you can sort of tell i use those analogies a lot you know, but we we don't have a good foundation. So all this other talk about all these things, it's all nice talk, but without a foundation, none of it's doable. Without any trust, if you don't trust the leader, when it, what comes out the leader's mouth or the anointed leader falls on deaf ears. So here's another thing and, you mentioned a couple of times. You talked about be, that, that we need a CEO, not just a politician. And you keep talking about you want to run government like a business. Now, most CEOs look for ways to increase revenue and, and make a big, huge profit. But in government, we almost have to say, look, we need ways to decrease revenue. I mean, for those for the, for the governors or, in my opinion, for the elected officials that want to decrease revenue, i.e. lower taxes, and then find ways to make government more efficient at the same time to be able to lower cost. You know, government doesn't need to make a profit off the people of the state. Government needs to be responsible to the people of our state. So if you're a CEO, is your thinking going to be in terms of how to reduce revenue, how to reducing taxes and reducing costs? Or is it going to be able to kind of reduce that, that income for this for the government? Look, it's all the above. You got to do everything just like you would in your business. Certainly, um, you want to be efficient. And efficiency isn't something that's talked a lot about. You know, we, 
we and change. We don't talk like that in government. So I, I'm, I'm not. I don't tell people I'm going to change anything. I'm going to bring what we've done at Treasury and do the same thing that I'm already doing at Treasury across all of state government. I have proven that if you run it like a business, you run a clean shop, that that the, the, the state workers and the department will respond. So I've already done it. This isn't an experiment. And I run a $60 billion operation. So I can bring those same things that we've done at Treasury, the same thing that I've done in business for the last 32 years to the rest of state government, invest in technology, uh, do it better, uh, and get better outcomes. And, and then it takes care of itself. And, and you have to decide what the priorities of government is. Because I say this a lot, that government's primary role is to provide safety and public education. I, I, I get it. So are you are you a lower tax guy? Do you do you, do you want to see us find ways to uh, lower taxes in Louisiana? Yeah, I mean, look, the only way we're going to lower taxes in Louisiana is to have more people paying taxes. You know, it's a it's a it's a economy of scale. Um, if you want to lower taxes, then you need to have more people working in this state. You know, right now we have four point six million people in Louisiana, two million on Medicaid, nine hundred thousand on Medicare. Now, I'm not saying they're not working, but many, many, many of them probably are not paying income tax to the state of Louisiana. So we don't have enough people going to work every day um, or, or entrepreneurs that are putting people to work uh, in quality jobs, making the kind of money that they're going to pay income tax. So if we're going to get if we're going to be better statistically, then you have to have more jobs. And, and quality or, or different kind of jobs. Because look, right now we have a lot of jobs available in this state, but people don't want the type of jobs that that are available. Mm -hmm. You know, the COVID has has changed the um, mindset of a lot of people. They don't want to work outside. You know, I was at the port of what Lake comes, Charles recently. So what what comes first? Well, uh, getting rid of the income tax or trying to build or trying to build the break uh, build the uh, the base. Look, I, I, I support getting rid of a state income tax, but that's going to happen over a um, over. Because we don't have enough people. Look, we lead the nation bit, not over what? in federal money. I support getting rid of income tax. The problem is we lead the nation per capita for the amount of federal money that comes into the state. So you think about this now. Our, our general fund budget's only about $11 billion this year in a $42, $44 billion uh, budget. Um, that's not good, William. I mean, that's you, you want to be last on that list, and we're actually um, first. Um, we're second in poverty. Um, that's not good. So we have, we have a pull of, um, of, of resources being drained. Um, that the only way you're gonna you're gonna have to work your way out of it. That's why I tell you, these, some of these things are generational problems, and and you have to start with the foundation, which means we're gonna have to invest in early childhood, uh, in in those one year olds, two year olds, three year olds, and prepare them for school. Because quite frankly, the other statistic that's very bad that we leave the nation in is children coming from from families that uh, aren't two parent households and and mothers we have a lot of single mothers who are stressed going to work trying to feed their children and clothe their children and don't have the time to um, educate and do all the things that like mom and dad did years ago when when the, when the mothers were home teaching their children dad would go to work make a living and and the family unit worked well the economy doesn't allow that anymore mom and dad have to go to work and if, you, if you're a single mother, then you got to go make a living to equal mom and dad. And that puts a lot of pressure on the, on, the, on the family. And then these kids show up in school. They're not prepared. And uh, we now want our teachers to be moms, dads, counselors, nurses. They want to, we want to, we have to feed the children. We have to sometimes what clothe do you, them. What do you think is going to be the most important piece of legislation to fix those problems? Look, look, I'm not going to lie to you. you I, I said this to you said this and you complimented me earlier. 
God did not intend for children to raise themselves. God intended for mom and dad to raise their children. That's according to the Old Testament. That's not John Schroeder's politics. That's God's law. Okay? Well, you are not going to pass a law that instills God's law in the people. That's a, that's just a fact. Right. We're here dealing with the ramifications of it. And, and I often say that we have to figure out how do we educate children, an overwhelming number of children that are coming from single parents, poor parents, unhealthy parents, and uneducated households. That's what we're dealing with in Louisiana. That's going to take a long time to fix. Well, and some of that's connected to that federal money like you talked about, which I've always talked about that the way that the federal government has pierced the veil of the Tenth Amendment of our of, of our United States Constitution, the way that they've been able to infringe on freedoms and liberties in each individual state is because they keep injecting that federal money with all these carrots attached to it that says, you know, you got to teach your children this. You you know, the, the Department of Education says we're going to give you this billion dollars, but you have to teach your children this program, which as we've seen. In some ways, that federal money has broken up families. It's taken fathers out of homes, and it's affected our freedoms and liberties. As governor, how will you be able to protect? What will you do to put freedom and liberty first in Louisiana? Yeah, I'm not going to take any money that 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 demoralizes uh, or changes what I believe by the by by God's law, what the family unit is supposed to look like. Now that could be interpreted a lot of different ways, but I'm, I'm not going to forsake the family just because we need federal money. Not going to happen. Okay. So and, and I guess we've got to find ways to wean ourselves off that federal money to be we able to. to, because I think part of, part of Louisiana's problem is that it is so dependent on federal money that we're not making our own decisions for our own people. We're dependent on that federal money, and it's kind of like Louisiana is a welfare state, kind of like some, when you have individuals that get you know, hooked on the welfare, they're not able to prosper. Their families aren't able to do well. Their families are torn apart because of that, that, that welfare money. You know, it's kind of like Louisiana is, the, is, the, is a state example of what happens to people when they get addicted to that federal money. So there's got to well, be ways to get off of it and make ourselves independent. Well, look, let's call it to what it is. We are a welfare state. Today, in America, people in Oklahoma, Nebraska, Texas, Tennessee, going to work, paying their federal taxes so they could send it to Louisiana. That's right. Think of it that way, because that's what's happening. So I said this when we started, and I only got a couple more minutes. Right. We, we don't have a foundation. So we have to build a foundation. We're going to have to prioritize early childhood and invest in it and stop the bleeding. You first, you know, I was taught in the military when you're wounded, the first thing you have to do is stop the bleeding. So we have to stop our bleeding and then we have a long way to go, William. I said this earlier that we need 30 years of good government. 30 years, not four years. You know, I want to start us down that road so that the next governor can just pick it up and march on. But I am absolutely in 100% support of family, the family, the choice of parents on education. Um, you know, we one, need one, to last, one last question before you have to go there. If yes, you were sir. governor during COVID, what happens when the, shut, what happens when, uh, the shutdowns come rolling along? We wouldn't have any shutdowns. You, know, you, know, you, know, you, wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have shut down the state then? I, I would not. I might have shut down maybe some public facilities, meaning government facility. But as far as business and, and the things that um, that that by on your free will you're in charge of, I have. I don't think government has any place to, to be able to shut that down. Um, when it comes to government institutions, different story. But private institutions um, and all these mom and pop businesses that were just crushed. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's just, 
it's just unbelievable what what they did. I, and I see the result of that all over the place. And Ellie and I felt it as much as anybody. Treasurer Schroeder, where do people find out more about you? What you say? JohnSchroeder.com. Go to my Facebook page or just call me. My cell phone's everywhere. I'm easy to get and um, happy to chat. Look, I don't have all the answers. I think we need a leader who listens. I think we need a leader who lives by the rules and doesn't have different sets of rules. I believe the rules have to be the rules and access is equal to all. And 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 that's what I'll be as, as your governor. I love it. Treasurer Schroeder, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome, sir. Take keep, care. Keep up the hard work. We'll talk soon. Thank you.